Right, so for this training video, I'm going to start with a new Adina instance. It's going to be Adina structures, and I don't need Parasolid in this case. Let's click OK. Navigate to the Adina modeler menu, and I'm going to import an existing step file. Um, let's refresh the um, screen, um, set the shading to solids, and let's displays, display the geometry by color. If we go to zone here, we see that there is three bodies, uh, one corresponding to the bracket, one to the bottom plates, and another one to the bolt. Right, so the next thing that I'm going to do is to go to meshing and mesh density, where I'm going to specify the element size that we want for analysis. So we go to point size, and I'm going to choose the all geometry points and set this to 2.5. So all points have a mesh size of 2.5 associated, even though it looks like nothing has actually happened. So I'm going to go back to meshing, mesh density, complete model. And now we are saying that the actually the model mesh size is going to be controlled by the endpoint sizes. So by clicking OK, the mesh density has now been updated. The next thing that I'm going to do is to define my element groups for this analysis. So I'm going to be consistent with the order that we see in here. So my first element group is going to be 3D solid, and it's going to be the plate, the green plate. It says that it has a default material 1, but if we click on the three dots, we see nothing has been defined yet. So we go to elastic isotropic at still and we define some values for the Young's modulus and Poisson ratio, which is all we need for this analysis. And now we have a material one. So material one is now associated to the 3D solid elements that will be for the plate. Click Save, and I'm going to add a second element group for the bracket. So I'm going to type a convenient description as well. It will also have a steel material one, so that's fine. We have to just save. And finally, we're going to add an element group for the bolts, and this is going to be a little bit special. So on the element option, we are going to choose the bolt option. And this is going to activate these fields here, where we can we will be able to define the bolts preload. So we only have one bolt, so the bolts index will be one, and we're going to start by assigning a load of one. I'm going to save, and I'm going to leave this dialog aside for a moment. We navigate to model, go to bolt, bolt options, and we want to define a bolt loading sequence table. So we select yes, and we click on the bolt table button. And a new dialog has opened where I can add a new bolt loading sequence table. So we are going to define here that at time step zero, before nothing else happens, we're going to define a tension in force at, we only have one bolt, so it's gonna be one step for bolt index number one, which corresponds to this one here. And it's going to be scaled. So the loading that we have applied, we have defined at the element group, is going to be scaled up by a factor, which in this case is going to be 2000. So the, what we're saying is that we are applying a bolt preload right at the beginning of the analysis with a tension of the product of the load and the scale factor, so 2000. We click OK to close the dialog, click OK, and this one was already defined. Right, so we're now going to move on to mesh the model. So we go to meshing, create mesh body. We say that element group one is decide that it will be for the plate. We're going to choose an eight noded element, which is a linear hexahedral. We double click on the body field, we select our plate, right click and finish. 
Um, just to make the mesh a little bit more regular, I'm going to uh, allow the pyramids to be, yes, that will improve the mesh quality a little bit. I click on apply and that's going to uh, mesh my bottom plates. We then move on to the second element group, double click the body field, select the bracket, right click and finish. We just need to be a bit careful here that when we mesh the second body, we don't want the nodes of the bracket to get merged with the nodes of the plates. We want this interface to rely on friction contact, so we don't want both meshes connected. So I'm going to assign this element group to, and the connectivity will be checked against the um, same element group only. So click on apply. That is going to mesh my bracket. And finally, we want to mesh the bolts. We don't need to change anything else. Double click on the uh, body field, select the bolt, right click and finish, and apply. So we now have a mesh model. Right. As I was saying, we have the different components are not connected. They will be relying on friction contact for the structure to work as intended. So for that, we need to define contact. The first thing is to define our contact group. So we will be adding a 3D contact group. I'm going to add a description, friction, and we're going to have a friction coefficient of 0.15. We click OK. And this contact group has appeared here on the tree view. We go back to the contact groups, but now we're going to click on the um, little arrow pointing downwards to start defining our contact surfaces. We're going to switch off the mesh to better access those surfaces. So we're going to add our first surface. So we're going to define which surfaces are in contact with which ones. For instance, the top of the bracket is going to be um, in contact with the, with the head of the bolt. So the first surface is bracket top. We double click on the surface field, select that surface, right click and finish, save. And we're going to add the bracket bottom surfaces. Now it's probably convenient to display, right click display the bracket group in isolation to be able to um, access those surfaces. So select, select, right click and finish and save. Um, we then move on to the uh, plate. So right click on the body display. We're saying only the plates. We can now add a new surface, which is the plates top surface. Select that one, right click and finish. Save. And we want to add the plates bottom surface. So we rotate the model, double click on surface. Select the surface, right click and finish. And finally, we display the bolt and we add the, the bolt top surface. Double click, select the surface, right click and finish. Save. And finally, the bolt bottom for surface. We're going to rotate the bolts, double click on the field, select the surface, right click and finish. Right, so we can clear the whole model and mesh plot again. Now, the very last thing that we need to do is we have six surfaces, but we need to specify which one is in contact with which. So we go one last time to the contact groups, the little arrow, define the contact pairs. And we're going to add, um, so first of all, the, the top of the bracket is going to be contacted by the uh, top of the bolt. Let's save and add. Um, the top of the plate, which is number three, is going to be contacted by the bottom of the bracket, which is two. And finally, the bottom of the plate, which is four, is going to be contacted by the bottom of the, of the, of the bolt. Um, so the bottom of the plate is going to be contacted by the bottom of the bolt. Save, and that's it. 
So we've set up the contact, and the very last thing to do is to apply uh, some supports and some loading to this model. So we're going to apply a fixity. We always have a applied, a, a defined a full fixity in Adena when we start a new model. So we're going to pick a surface. Again, convenient to switch off the mesh and have the um, solid shading. Double click on face surface, pick that one, right click and finish. And we have supports. And now we apply the loading. Now, for the loading, we're going to, first of all, define a pressure. We're going to add it. It's going to be a pressure of one in this case. Apply it to a face. So we double click, select the top surface of the brackets and finish and apply. Now, this loading is associated to a time function. So to define that time function, we just go to control, time function, and we say that at the initial time step, zero, the only thing that is happening is that the bolt preload is being applied. So we want at time step zero, that uh, pressure to be zero, and at time step one, the value of that is the, the factor or that applies to that uh, pressure to be one. So we click OK. And now if we display the mesh and we turn on the loading, we can see that we have some loading applied. And now we are ready to uh, solve the analysis. So as usual, we go to a data file solution, save, and the analysis will start to run. OK, that has been completed. We can close all these dialogues and switch to the post-processing interface. We're going to open the results that we have just created. We can see that, well, we can't actually appreciate uh, the deformations on this bracket. That's because it's probably quite small. They are quite small, so we can scale displacements up automatically. We see that, well, it's actually quite big displacement, so maybe we are going to, through the uh, modify mesh plot, mold depiction, set this 300 to something more, more reasonable. Let's put a magnification factor of 80. OK, so that's a bit more uh, sensible. If we go to the previous time step, we see that that is the, um, the form shape at time step 0 when the bolt is uh, preloaded. And then we apply that pressure and the deformations go up a little bit further. We're going to, for instance, switch off the contact, and we know that we can uh, display different uh, stress components. So, for instance, through a quick bump plot, we could see the uh, bone mice stresses for different time steps, for a bolt preload, and for uh, once the loading is applied subsequently. Or we might be interested to actually see, for instance, what is the Axial stress on the bolt, so we can decide to come to the zones, right click, display to see the bolt in isolation, and then maybe we want to see the actual stress which is coincident with the z axis. So let's plot the uh, zz stress, and we can use this to verify that the stresses are in line with the preload that we have uh, we have specified at uh, during the modeling stages. This concludes this training video. Thank you very much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.